Welcome to Weld.com. I'm running an Everlast 200 dV dual voltage. And I want to, we've done some videos on alternating current aluminum with some pulse sequence. And I'm, I'm curious to know what this thing runs on uh, DC TIG. So I want to do a, a uh, open root TIG, uh, TIG root with eighth inch ER70 S6. And then I want to switch it over to stick. I'll probably do a TIG root a TIG fill, a uh, 330 second low hydrogen, and a, and a 7018, and I'll probably do a 7018 cap. So the second uh, fill pass is going to be small. So anyway, uh, let me get my hood on, and uh, I'll come back and we'll do this route, see how this machine runs. I have my machine set at 175 amps. I don't, doesn't feel like I'm using it all. Like I'm using a foot pedal with high freak start. Pretty smooth arc so far. I like it. Trying to leave this wire on the leading edge. Walk the cup up here. I think right now would be a good time to give a shout out to Westchester Iron Cat Goatskin Gloves. These are pretty, pretty comfortable. Have this plate leaning back a little bit for camera angle. <clears throat> we could do this demo on pipe as well. It's just a little easier to to show. It's the same kind of the same procedure and sequence. Just easier and quicker to do plate. Again, looking for arc features with the machine. I ran this route with a number five cup. I don't know what my amperage was. I think it might have been around, I had set it at 175. I know I wasn't using all of that. <clears throat> Probably 115, 120, somewhere in there. I am using all of it now. I'm just trying to get a good little fill pass over this so I don't when I run my next pass in with low hydrogen 7018 stick, I don't rearrange that route. Trying to go just outside the toe of the weld, spend some time out on the bevel face, get some get some fill in here. Neither one of these welds took very long at all. Again, this simulates a procedure that you could run on piping and good practice, good practice. Welcome back. I went ahead and switched the machine over to uh, DC stick and reduce my amperage down to 80 amps. 
There is an arc force or dig feature on this machine. I'm just going to leave it at 50% this time just to see kind of how things go. And uh, I want to put a fill pass in this. I've done the TIG root. I've done a, a, a quick TIG fill over the top of it. I've got way enough room to do a, to do a fill pass here. So I want to run some 332nd, 70-18. Hello there, Rod. How are you doing? We also had some real good feedback about the use of ventilation and the reason we haven't in the past is because of audio. And uh, I found a real quiet fan to get this smoke blowing away from me. Now it's blowing right toward the cameraman. Too bad about the cameraman, he always talks too much anyway. I hope he's doing okay over there. I hope it's not messing with his... <coughs> yeah. What's that you say? I hope it's not messing with his shot. Uh, normally my, my slag will come off real easy like that, but I'm pecking on the crater here, trying to get all the goodies out of the crater. Do some housekeeping inside my bead. All right, check this out. I'm going to scratch my arc above this into the finished bead, bring it down, and then come back up. It's the way I like to do it. Passed a lot of x-rays over the years. Always like to get a good hot start. Just one of the ways of doing it. Let the rod get stable. Smells like 7018 to me. I like to feel this rod touching the bevel face. And I'm not gouging it by any means. I'm just trying to hold it. I just pushed a bad angle on this rod, but I'm going to stay with it. I had this thing pointed down. My bad should have been up here like this where I stayed pretty straight in. I'm going to, uh, I've run two rods in here. And I'm going to leave it like that. I've had good feedback where people appreciate seeing the, of course, I didn't do it on the route. Golly, I forgot. Sorry about that, folks. Um, they, they gave me feedback saying, I really appreciate you leaving the beads in there so we could see each layer. I'm going to show you where my restart was. It was right there. I went over and dropped myself five amps for this cap. <clears throat> a couple of reasons. I'm, I'm fairly wide. I don't have a whole lot to fill borderline more than I want, but my plates are heating up and I felt a little too lazy to go over and cool them off. So if I was welding on longer material, it would probably, the heat would probably disperse more and I'd leave it alone. So I, I went ahead and dropped it five amps. I haven't done anything to the arc force or dig. It's still sitting at 50%. The machine seems to arc up pretty strong every time. I'm not having a I'm not having a hard time getting the arc started. I'm trying to weave just inside the beveled edge. 
and pause long enough for it to um, fill out. Pretty smooth arc, I'm liking this. Again, this machine is a 60% duty cycle. I think we could turn out a bunch of 8th inch 532 work with this and never have a problem with stick. Mm. Oh my, that just kind of fell right off of there. I'm not one to beat my slag up. I like slag peel, but I'm not one. If it's not coming off there, I'm not one to beat it up. I learned my lesson a long time ago. <clears throat> On my restart, I hit the elevation or the level right. I got just a little bit wide. Oh, it crawled out there a little bit. Anyway, we don't have any undercut. Uh, you know, again, let's recap. We did a, a TIG root, eighth inch. ER70S6. I was running off the foot pedal. I think it was around 115, 120 amps when I was lacing it up. I, I fed the wire from the backside. Uh, about a 5 30 second gap, eighth inch wire that ran in pretty nice. We got good reinforcement. And then we ran a fill pass. I apologize for not leaving part of the root in there so we could see it. I guess I was just having so much fun, I just laced over the top of it. And then uh, we did a, a 332 7018 fill, and then we did a 332 7018 cap. I did reduce the amperage by five amps because my plates were saturated with heat. Oh yeah, they warm. They they're warm. Oh yeah. So, you know, again, we're looking at the machine. I, I thought it ran great. I mean, it's a cool little machine. It's it's pretty. Uh, it's got a lot of features to it. AC, DC, uh, stick, TIG. You could do a lot of cool stuff with this. So if you need a, you know, I wouldn't be scared to have this to go to the field with, to do some portable work. <clears throat> it runs dual voltage. You know, if somebody called me and said, dude, I, I need you to come in and do some stainless work in the kitchen or something, all I've got is 110. I'm in, you know, I can pick the machine up, carry it around. I'll go plug it into, plug it into 110, hook it up to DC and do some stainless work. Again, we've simula or simulated a procedure here that's synonymous with piping as well. So, uh, you know, we, could, we just did this in the 3G position, but we could be doing the same thing on pipe for 5G. It's all the same thing, technique. Filler wires the same on carbon. So I hope this helps. Uh, please subscribe to the videos. Uh, new videos come out every week. Thank you for watching Weld.com. I'm Bob Moffat with Cowley College.